Welcome to the CNS Podcast featuring Dr. Daryl Anaba, Research Director for CNS Productions. One, one of the more uh, exciting things I think happening in the understanding of addiction and how it works in the brain. For years we focused on, on this, this go switch ever since the 1950s when James Olds and then Robert Heath discovered that there's a place in our brain, our very primitive brain, that when you take a psychoactive drugs, whether you're a normie or, or somebody predisposed to addiction, it doesn't matter. If you take a psychoactive drugs, that part of the circuitry, that primitive part of the brain that's part of the mammalian, part of the reptilian brain, the non-thinking automatic brain, that makes you want to take it more. You just got to keep going and take it more. And the, the fascinating thing is we found that in an addict's brain, their more is a lot more. They, their brain in that circuitry called the mesolimbic reward reinforcement circuitry made up of these different components of the brain, nucleus accumbens, the uh, lateral hypothalamus, and the ventral tegmental, also some substantia. There's all sorts of little organelles within that area of the midbrain. If you take a drug that's addictive, you just have to take more of it. And in an addict, it's a thousand times more than in a normie first time they get, get exposed. So we've concentrated and really detailed out that circuitry to understand how and why addicts continue to seek out drugs despite the fact that they're no longer feeling good from the drugs, they're suffering catastrophic consequences. Well, all, all of a sudden, there's a, been a lot of focus in the last 10 years or so on the control circuitry. We noted uh, right away uh, that once the go circuit is activated in the brain, the reward reinforcement circuitry is activated in a normie brain, they, their control circuitry, part of their forebrain and part of the, the mesocortex brain as well, the limbic brain, activates, that shuts off. Once they activate, they shut off the go switch. That's in the normie. But what was found very early when we can image the brain is that in an addict, their go switch is on even more. They got to take more of the drug once they take an addictive drug. And then there's no feedback. There's no shutting off of their nucleus accumbens. So uh, researchers begin to look, and they found uh, that there is the prefrontal cortex, the, the uh, sort of executive function of the brain, this area called the orbital prefrontal cortex, uh, the left ventral medial prefrontal cortex. And that area of the brain acts to stop or to control the reward reinforcement circuitry. 1992, this guy Gaylord Ellison actually found that the control bundle of nerves that go back from the prefrontal cortex to the reward reinforcement, the mesolimbic cortex, an area called the fasciculus retroflexus, that this, these bundles of neurons, these bundles of neurons, if you expose them to a high level of dopamine, of course, every addictive drug is going to release tons of dopamine, okay? Alcohol, nicotine, um, of course, methamphetamine, cocaine, nicotine, all those drugs that cause addiction, part of it is because of the huge amount of dopamine that's released, attaches to the nucleus accumbens septi and the dopamine 2 receptor things. And you just have to have more. Well, what was found by Ellison is that the high release of dopamine actually caused destruction, actually caused deterioration of the fasciculus retroflexus neurons, they actually die and you lose neurons. So the connection between the control part of the brain and the goal part of the brain gets destroyed actually the more you use. And there's uh, a lot of, of uh, inference that some people are genetically more sensitive in that area of the brain to the effects of dopamine and they lose it after just a binge or taking uh, a, a high amount of drugs for a short period of time they're going to actually destroy their brain's connection from the control circuitry to the go circuitry, meaning they have no ability to turn off the drugs. Well, now the control circuitry is being detailed out, and a lot more research is going on with that part of the brain, including areas of the, uh, of the anterior habanula, the uh, anterior cingulate gyrus, uh, the prefrontal cortex, and... and uh, those areas of the brain, uh, of course, uh, I meant to mention also the fasciculus retroflexus, that those areas of the brain are extremely sensitive uh, to high levels of dopamine. 
and in the process of drug use, so your act of just using the drug itself is actually destroying your ability to control your use drug. Now, this was first researched in 1992. Uh, just before that, Glenn Hansen at the University of Utah had shown that uh, high use of ecstasy, high use of methamphetamine, high use of cocaine actually destroyed uh, dopaminergic neurons. And I think this wasn't listened to for at least 10, maybe 15 years because uh, many people felt this was too much scare tactic, that this hard to prove from the research uh, methodology they're using. Uh, people were convinced that this was trying to just scare individuals that they're going to use drugs, they're going to kill brain cells and destroy themselves. So it wasn't paid attention to. But recently with our ability to be more uh, sensitive and understanding and watching how brain cells are affected and watching how brain cells are impacted by drugs abuse, we're finding that they were right in 1992, that dopaminergic drugs, those that are addictive, actually destroy brain cells that are needed to control your use of those substances. So the more you use or higher dose you use, the less able you're you, you can stop. And, and what this means to, in terms of addiction again, is again we have a, a greater understanding that it's not a weak or bad or stupid person who becomes an addict. It's a person whose brain is altered, whose brain is different. They have a different brain cell, different brain cell uh, function, different brain chemistry, which robs them of their ability to, to control drugs, robs them of ability to stop using once they start, and robs their ability even to stay stopped once they try to stop. But the key is that the brain is, is a very resilient organ. The brain has the ability to uh, grow new connections and new networks, uh, even some brain cells as well now. So the longer a person is able to refrain and not restart their drugs if they are an addict, the better the brain is able to build circuitry that helps them uh, remain in recovery. But the first, uh, actually the first couple of years, is going to be pretty rough with uh, what we've learned about the brain. That wraps our pod for today. Thanks for visiting the CNS Podcast. Please check back soon for the next in the series and visit our website, 